Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and I'm fishing on the Warwickshire Haven today on the BAA waters at Markliff, which is just downstream of Bidford on Avon. The river's just fining down after another one of the many floods we've had this year in fact. I haven't really fished the Avon properly in terms of float fishing for probably three or four months. Every time the river starts to drop it's back up again and I've picked a peg today that I've never actually fished before but one of my good mates Andy Burt who fishes the venue quite a bit has said is a reliable peg. It's a reliable peg for odd chub and odd roach so I'm not expecting to bag up today but I thought it'd be a, a great peg and a great venue to show how to tackle uh, a river in the winter like the Warwickshire Haven when it's cold and it's just dropping after a flood. So as you can see there's still a bit of colour in the water. Um, the, it, the river's really held its colour and flow for about a week really. It's taken a lot longer to drop than I was anticipating. And I do know the stretch above at Bidford quite well because we match fish it and quite a few of my friends fish it, they fish midweek matches up there and that's been fishing well. One of the main methods up there has been fishing with bread for the roach and that's the bait I'm going to start with today. It's a, a deadly method in the winter and it's one that will often get your bites pretty instantly. So in my mind it's always good to start on the bread. If it was more coloured than this, I wouldn't entertain it, but anything like this kind of tinge of colour going into right to clear water, bread's a great start. And looking at the peg, I can see that there's, it's quite slack on the inside and the flow picks up, but the main flow is about two thirds out. So I've decided today I'm going to start on the feeder. Obviously I can feed and fish very effectively with a, a feeder. I'm using a small 40 gram cage feeder and I'm going to start off with a, a decent bit of bread. That's two punches of flake effectively and I'm going to just cast it into that main flow just past the middle. The feed itself is two thirds white crumb, a third brown crumb. I'm not using liquidised bread straight away because I think if you're not sure how, much, how many fish are in front of you or are going to feed, you can overfeed the fish with liquidised bread very quickly. Obviously it's got a higher food content. So all I'm looking to do here is just attract some fish right to my feeder and hopefully get them to take the bait. So that's the way I'm going to start. I'll probably give this 15, 20 minutes and if that doesn't work, then I can explain other ways that I'd tackle a peg like this. Well there we go, first cast as I said with the bread, it's not a massive roach but probably five ounces and that took a surprisingly big bit of bread really, that's a size 12 hook so it just shows you, well it shows you that roach will feed on big bits of bread and also what a great starting bait bread is, particularly when it's cold like this in the winter. So I'm going to go in with another couple of big discs of of bread and see if we can get another fish. Well my mentality when I'm fishing the bread like this is I'm only going to feed the bread on one line and I'm not going to feed anything else at all. It's, it's quite a wide bit of river here and there's obviously different options of fishing different ranges, fishing close in perhaps with a stick float, uh, a bolo or a waggler down the middle and fishing with maggots but to start with, I'm just going to try to concentrate all the feed and my efforts on the bread. Obviously with time, I can start to lose feed maggots uh, to fish a float or maybe 
fish a maggot feeder. I think that's what I'm going to do today because the river's really sort of on the cusp between being a, a maggot river uh, with the colour. So when you've got colour in the water, I think it's proven that the maggot feeder is a better bet rather than trying to catch on a float. I mean, I'm desperate to catch on the float because I haven't been able to so long, but I think that's what I'm going to do. But catching that roach first cast on the bread is a good indication that we've got some fish out there and hopefully fish feeding. There you go. Yeah. Well, I've only been in for perhaps another two or three minutes and had a nice drop, drop back bite on the tip. And I'm playing a decent fish here. I don't know if it's a, a chub or a big roach. I know up in Bidford and uh, in, on the matches, I've been catching some beautiful roach. Now, I think this is a chub. The way it's fighting, it's it's hugging the bottom, so let's have a look. Yeah, it's a chub. He's, uh, he's fighting well. It's not massive, but nice fish. Here he comes. Nice one. Got to be uh, nudging two pound. I'll quickly unhook him. Nice benefit about fishing. A positive piece of bread like this is you can fish a, a decent hook and a decent hook length. I'm fishing a, a 12 hook and a 019 hook length, which is four pounds. So gives you a good chance to play fish, bonus fish like that chub. Brilliant. All right then, let's get him in the net and we'll see if we can get another one. So I'm going to repeat the process. I'm going to fish the same two big punches of, of bread on the hook and I'm going to load the feeder. Sometimes I think you find this with bread. I did mention it at the start that you'll get a, a quick response from the fish. And then for some reason you stop catching whether you've overfed them or the fish spook and drop down, I don't know. But there's a few tips that, or tricks that I use to try and to kind of extend the catching period on this method. On, obviously on a, on a red letter day, you can catch all day on it, but I'm gonna have one more chuck with this feeder, hopefully catch another fish. And if after that, I'm gonna change over to a straight lead, but let's give it another go. So I'm just trying to drop the feeder in exactly the same spot. Just feel the feeder down to the bottom. And what I do is, on hard days like this, when I'm targeting chub and roaches, I'll actually clip up. So what I want to do is I want to be able to cast the feeder to the spot I want, be able to pay out a bow of line onto the clip. And I'll talk about that later because it's a really key point. I had a fast bite then. So whether that was a small fish, I don't know, but uh, there's definitely fish out there. So I'm gonna just try this trick that I talked about. So I'm gonna swap the feeder now for straight lead. Because what I don't wanna do is keep going in. I know I'm not feeding a lot of bread, but it's winter and it's cold. And I want to sort of maximize the fish that I'm catching. So I'm gonna switch over to this flat lead. Obviously gonna cast it to the same spot. I won't do this many times, I might just do it once or twice and gives me the other option of casting a bit further down the peg as well because sometimes the fish will back off a bit and drop down the peg and I think if you're fishing a, a feeder you're going to just push them further and further down your peg. So another trick is to change your hook to a smaller hook and fish a smaller bit of bread. I'm going to go in with two punches again. I'm just going to drop that in the same spot. Feel it to the bottom. And because I've cast slightly upstream, I've now got enough room to put the rod on the rest and have a bit of a bow because if I tighten right up to the feeder or the lead, I wouldn't, I'd have to fish a much heavier weight to hold the bottom. 
and you want to balance the, the lead or the feeder to the flow. So most of the time you get the drop back bites that I've been getting and the fish have hooked themselves. Ugh. I think that was a bite, so I'll try once again and I'll concentrate on the tip this time. So I reckon that lead now is going to be settling just, just in front of me. Well, I didn't get a bite that cast and I'm just going to try a bigger piece of flake. So I've just simply torn a bit of bread and pinched it around the hook. It might have been that those two bites I missed were off, off smaller roach and if there's a decent fish out there like a chub, we might just attract it with a bit bigger bait. So again, I'm just fishing the lead and I'll probably give it another couple of casts before I go back on the feeder and introduce a bit more feed. When you're fishing bread on a river like this, and certainly when you're getting bites, you really can't leave the bread in for too long because obviously you don't want to leave it in with no bait on the hook, so I won't leave it in too long. I'll probably only leave it in for two or three minutes in this situation. Perhaps if I was just fishing for chub and I was using a bigger bait, then I would leave it in for, for longer. It's quite nice with the lead sometimes because what it will do is, if you just maybe have it only just heavy enough to hold the bottom, it will bump down the, the swim a little bit, which must be very natural and attractive to the fish. So I'm not so bothered about a lead moving. Obviously if it was a snaggy peg, then you'd have to find a, a clear spot and make sure that you kept your bait in there. But this peg so far doesn't seem to be too snaggy and it's, I'm guessing, I've not plumbed the depth, but I'm guessing it's about six or seven foot deep. We'll, we'll find out if we fish the float, but it's a nice depth. Lots of good pegs along this stretch and it was quite a tough choice really where to go. I was really, uh, really taking some time over it because there's some great pegs here and it's a, uh, it's a popular venue. Well, that trick hasn't worked today, but I will try it again. And I'm gonna switch my lead back to a feeder and just introduce a bit more bait again. So I think I'm gonna have one more cast with a piece of flake rather than a punch. And if I don't get a bite or miss a bite, I'll go back to the punch. But it just shows you what, what I was kind of anticipating. I had two fish on the first two casts and missed a few bites, so. Be nice to get one more, one more decent fish on the bread. You'll notice I'm, I'm casting under arm because we're not casting far. I'm only casting about probably 16, 17 meters out into the river. And just by underarming it like that, I'm not creating a big disturbance with the feeder hitting the bottom. I can, or hitting the water rather, I can feather the feeder into the, into the river and casting overhead sometimes you can create much more disturbance. I've uh, had two or three more casts on both punch bread and, and flake and I've had a bite every cast but I can't hit them so I'm going to try a slightly lighter hook length. I'm going to drop down to a 013 hook length and that's probably around about three pound breaking strain. And I'm going to put a, I think I'm going to try a 14 hook. So. It's not a small hook, but with bread, you know, you can get away with 
fishing a bit bigger, bigger hook because it'll even a smaller punch bread will swell up a bit. So I think I'm going to try a, a 14 Kamasan B560. Let's see if that will catch them out. I just wonder if it is those smaller roach that are sort of pinching the bait. And if this doesn't work, then I'm going to change over to a maggot feeder and we'll, we'll hopefully find out what the culprits are. But I'm pleasure fishing today and I think fishing the bread is going to give me the better chance of catching some bonus fish. So I'm going to persevere with it perhaps a bit longer than if I was fishing a match. I've also changed to a slightly smaller cage feeder. This is a, a 20 gram version with probably, I don't know, half the capacity of the bread. Because I kind of referenced it at the start. I, I don't want to overfeed the fish. Obviously if you were catching lots of fish then you'd keep feeding more bait but let's just see if we can try and catch what we can before we start putting any more bait in. The setup I'm using today is my standard sort of river feeder rig which is the swivel and the feeder running on a length of doubled up line which is formed by a loop. I've got a one of these Drennan bead swivels at the bottom and a gripper stop at the top. So I've got that kind of bolt effect to maybe help the fish hook themselves when they dislodge the feeder. And also, I like the fact that I've used this rig for so long now, it's in many of my videos. If I hook a big fish and it, the feeder snags up, the, the feeder will run over that knot and push the gripper stop up away out of trouble so you've got more chance of of landing the fish if you fish the swivel and the feeder inside the loop that's when you get cracked off and lose a lot of fish so simple rig really and i'm fishing with a tail that's around about three to four foot deep to start with if it was clearer i'd probably be tempted to fish a longer tail but we've still got a good tinge of color and the fact that I'm missing some bites might make me try and shorten the tail even further to try and connect with them. All right then, this is going to be my last cast on the bread. And if I don't catch, I'm going to switch over to a maggot feeder. There's definitely fish feeding out there. And I can use the same rig, just change the feeder and change the hook and hook bait. Okay, as planned, I'm gonna switch over from a cage feeder to a, a maggot feeder. I've changed the feeder over, that's a 30 gram small black cap and I've also changed the hook length. I've gone down to 012, which I don't know, what's that, about two pound hook length? And I'm going to fish a size 20 carbon match. So obviously I'm scaling down a bit to fish the maggot and this technique, this style of maggot feeder fishing on the Avon can be very, very effective when you're faced with a river like this that's still a bit up, carrying some colour. So it's always sort of in the forefront of my mind when I'm fishing, particularly in the winter, like this. Like the bread, I might get a quick response to it. And also, I can build the peg up by changing the size of the feeder, the amount of feed that I'm putting through the feeder and if we have a good response to it I might start loose feeding some maggots and then see if we end up 
catching on the float. So I'm just going to start on a single maggot. I'm going to fish it on exactly the same line as the bread with exactly the same kind of tactics with casting. So I'm just going to underarm it into position slightly upstream. Feel the feeder down to the bottom. Once it's on the bottom, I can let a bit of line off. The line's on the clip now. I can put the rod on the rest and hopefully we'll start getting some fish again. The real line I'm using today on the feeder, it's, a, it's not a heavy feeder setup. I'm using four pound pro gold, which has a diameter of around about 0.19 millimeter. So I'm not going to be fishing with big heavy hook lengths and I'm not really expecting to catch lots of big fish like barbel. So I can fish with a bit more finesse, which definitely helps when you're trying to balance a, a much lighter feeder and also when you're going to scale down a bit, perhaps to get bites on a hard day. And the reels are CS7 4000, which I use a lot when I'm feeder fishing. They're really nice, strong, smooth reel with a great drag. So very, very dependable and a reel that I really like using. Well, I had a, a few small roach, just an ounce or two ounce on the maggot feeder, and that's a, a better bite and a bit of a surprise, really, in the form of a perch. It's a nice perch, about, I don't know, eight or ten ounces. I just had him on a single bronze maggot. So, I'm getting bites pretty much every cast on the maggot feeder, and... I think a lot of the time it's those smaller roach, but I'm going to keep going, keep feeding. I've actually changed down to a, a 20 gram black cap feeder just to help because the 30 gram was just holding the bottom very easily. This, this 20 gram is just about holding the bottom. And I think that's really key when you're fishing this method for, for smaller fish and chub because you're balancing the feeder perfectly to the flow and the fish has just got to touch the maggot I think and then the feeder dislodges and the fish hooks itself. So I'm casting quite regularly probably at least every five minutes but perhaps every two or three minutes just trying to get a, a steady stream of maggots into the swim. So this style of maggot feeder fishing, it's not a lazy method at all. It's, it's really good fun. It's almost like float fishing really, because you're, you're constantly casting and working and trying to kind of trick the fish. With this feeder, if I tighten up too quickly to the feeder, then the, the feeder will dislodge so if that happens too much, I'll have to go back up to the 30 gram, but one trick you can do is just cast a little bit further upstream, which will enable you to get the feeder to land and have a bit more of a bow to just help hold the feeder in position without dislodging it. I'm just hoping I'll get another bite. If I don't get a bite now within the next minute, I'm gonna cast out and repeat the process. Sometimes a good little trick is just to dislodge the feeder before you reel it in and just bounce it a couple of times. So you're perhaps just moving the hook bait down, down the swim a little bit further. Obviously, sometimes the fish will hang off the, off the feed or perhaps they're just intercepting the odd maggot that goes further away. Anyway, no bite that cast, so We'll give it another go and I think I'm going to try a, 
a double maggot this time. I'm going to try a, a, a single red and a single bronze. And that, for some reason, is a can be a great chub bait on the Avon. I'm just hooking them gently through the tail, not through the fat end. You'll notice when I'm reeling in, there's no maggots left in the feeder at all. So I'm pretty confident the, the maggots are getting to the bottom with the feeder and then emptying quite quickly, which is exactly what I want to do. You'll notice before I cast then, I just dip the, the feeder in the water just to stun the maggots to stop them from perhaps crawling out during the cast. So let's see if we can get that nicely in position. The rod I'm using is the CR10 13 foot number two. And it's a wonderfully versatile rod for fishing like this. You can land bigger fish with it like chub, bream, odd barbel, no problem. It's got a lovely progressive action that will enable you to catch silver fish like smaller roach and perch. And the tip I'm using today is the, the two ounce tip. So it's the stiffest tip that comes with the rod. You don't want to, when you're fishing like this, with the rod up in the air, fishing with a feeder, the 13 foot length really helps because it enables you to keep more line out of the water than perhaps a shorter rod would and therefore use an even lighter lead or feeder. And using a softer tip would be counterproductive because I'm looking for a drop back bite anyway. And I think, it, I don't know if you saw that, but that was a bite. I don't think I've got it. I think it was another small fish, but it just highlighted what I was saying. It was a, a lovely drop back bite. And I think a slightly stiffer tip like this two ounce tip exaggerates that. Well, one of the maggots is completely chewed and the other one isn't. So perhaps that was a, another one of those roach. So I'll try a, I'll tell you what I'll try. I'll try a, a double fluoro pinky and see if that just sneaks one of those roach because uh, they're proving to be a bit frustrating. There's obviously quite a lot of small fish feeding, which is, which is good, but also unusual for this time of year because a lot of the time when you fish like this, when it's cold, you're targeting the odd bigger fish, but the smaller fish feeding and makes me think that a float might even be better. So I'm gonna persevere with the feeder, keep doing this for at least another hour, just to see if we can catch another bonus fish like a chub or maybe a perch, big roach. And then I might just start loose feeding some maggots as well and set up a float line. But it just kind of highlights my kind of approach on a day like this on the river. You know, you can't do too many things at once. You can sort of, in your mind, have different methods that you're going to use. On a perfect day, you just catch on the, at the start and that's it. But more often than not, it's like this. You're just sneaking a few fish out, just carefully picking them out using different methods. Well, that was a lovely classic drop back bite and the way this is fighting I think it's a roach I can feel the the sort of jerks and knocks as it's fighting and it is it's a lovely roach brilliant those are the kind of roach I was expecting on the bread but that's a lovely fish not as red as normal I think because the river's been so colored for so long the fish are actually quite pale. But that's a beautiful roach. It's got to be 10 or 12 ounces. I had that one on a single bronze maggot. I've had a few small roach on the feeder and I think I'm going to well, I'm definitely going to start loose feeding a float line now. 
Uh, it feels to me like it probably could have been a better day for the float. It's uh, been a difficult choice really because obviously the river's just in transition between being in flood and dropping to a normal river. But I'm pleased that we've had those fish and bites on the feeder. So what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start loose feeding some maggots. Quite regular while I'm fishing the feeder. I'm going to feed them on the same line and my objective is to fish the float and run on from where I've been fishing the feeder. So I think before I do go on the float, I'll just explain to you the feeders I've been using and then we can give the float a go. Um, I've been itching to try it really because the river's been up for so long. I haven't really been able to do any float fishing for ages so I'm quite keen to give it a go. Okay, so on the bread at the start, I started off on one of these, that's a, a 40 gram uh, matrix cage feeder. Uh, it's not a massive feeder, you know, I, did, I talked about not overfeeding the fish. So I think that's a great starting sort of open end feeder. And then when I wanted to reduce the weight of the feeder and also the volume, I switched to that Guru, that's a 20 gram feeder. And that held quite nicely in the flow as well. So when I switched from the bread, I kept with the same rig, I just had a snap swivel, and I switched over to these black cap feeders. And as you can see, I like to carry a variety of different weights and also sizes. So on the Avon, I tend to just use the, the small size black cap and the medium size. So in the small size, I've got them from 20 gram up to around about 60 grams. Obviously they're going to, being smaller, they're going to reduce, they're going to feed a smaller amount of maggots. A good tip is, if you want to let the feed come out the feeder quicker, just open the holes up like I have on that one, just by cutting them. Um, obviously that will make the maggots come out a lot quicker. And on this one, I've just kind of bored out the holes a little bit thicker. Sometimes you find in the cold, the maggots are taking a long time to come out the feeder. If you want to be feeding really regularly and introducing lots of maggot quickly, that's a good tip. So really that's it for the feed. As I showed you the rig, let's give the float a go. That's a roach on a stick float, not a monster, but I reckon that was the kind of culprit that I was missing on the bread and getting the odd one on the maggot feeder. So it'd be nice if we can get a few of those going. I'm fishing a eight number four stick float. It's actually a little bit deeper than what I guessed on the feeder. Where, where I'm fishing out there, it's gotta be getting on for eight foot deep. And the float's going through really nicely. It's a, it's a lovely still day. So I think as this session's proving, you've got to be a bit open-minded really when you're river fishing, especially on a peg that you've never fished before, like this one for me today. Um, and when you're fishing in a, like a transition period I suppose I could have just fished a feeder all day today and oh, caught, I definitely would have caught some fish. I caught some fish, I might have caught a few more, but what I'm trying to do really is just maximise what I can from the peg. So hopefully if we can add a few fish to the on the float now, we'll get a nice mixed bag of fish and utilise different methods to catch them. So it makes it a really interesting day.
Well, I had a few roach on the stick and I just thought I'd change tactics and try a, a bolo. Just with the stick, the wind's just got up a little bit and it was hard keeping it in position and I just feel that I just want to run my float a bit further out. So with a, a three gram bolo, I should be able to achieve that. And I'm just going to put a, a hook length on and I'm going to go as fine as I dare, which is um, an 010 hook length. And I'm going to go with a 20 hook. So I'm gambling a little bit if I did hook a big chub, but I think it's it's mainly roach that are, are out there feeding at the moment. So one thing that I've learned over the years is if you do go a bit finer and don't catch, step up because there's little point running your float through on a hard day and hooking a big fish and losing it. But many times fishing a bit finer can get your bites. So I'm going to give this a go. The rod I'm using is a CR10 18 foot number one and it's absolutely brilliant for fishing with a bolo like this because the extra length just really helps with control when you're fishing a good distance out like we are today and it is a decent depth so it just makes the job so much easier. I'm just having to retie that hook because I wasn't happy with it to start with. But I've got the bulk today about three foot above my hook and then I've got two number eights, bulks, two number eights, two number eights. So as always with a bolo rig you need to make the rig positive otherwise you're going to have trouble with tangles and I think I've mentioned it before when I've been bolo fishing but I use quite a heavy section of line or a heavier section than my main line for the for the rig it's actually 019 which is four pound power line um, Pro Gold and then my, my real line is 017 and that bit stiffer line just helps prevent tangles and that's the float it's just a, a three gram carbon stemmed bolo float so let's give that a go see if that makes any difference I'm just going to fish a, a single maggot and I'm just going to underarm it get it out to the spot and then really feather it, really break the float to make sure everything straightens out and, and doesn't tangle. So that's perfect. And then feeding, I've just been feeding 10 or 15 maggots once or twice a cast and trying to get my float to run down with the maggots. So because the river's still got a lot of pace on it, I think the bolo float's going to help me sort of Boss the swim a bit. I obviously considered fishing a waggler and a waggler could work but I think a waggler would be better when the river was a bit lower and clearer and maybe not as pacey. So my plan is just to switch between this bolo float and the stick float and try and work out which is better. Obviously as always when you're trotting a float on a river you're controlling the line so that you're presenting the bait really naturally by just slowing the float down slightly and with a long rod like this it's so easy to do you can keep the line behind the float there we go that's a fish oh no it's not it was the bottom I'm just fishing a bit deeper and must have pulled into a snag so I maybe need to just shallow up a little bit got me going anyway it was a good bite You can see I'm just casting slightly upstream, which is enabling me to feed on top of the float. So by the time I've fed, I can get my feed running down with the float. And I think that's key. That's really critical when you're fishing for chub. If you want your hook bait in amongst your, in amongst your loose feed.
It's a little bit tricky to spot. It's quite a quite a dull day really. And with the different colours on the water, it's not so easy to see my float, but I've got a black top version as well, so I might have to switch between the two different colours when the wind gets up like this and fish with a black top to help me see it. So I'll just show you the stick float rig I'm using. I'm fishing the 15 foot number one match rod and this stick float and this type of presentation and rig is really my favourite when I'm fishing on the Avon. If I can fish it effectively and control it, this I think is the best type of presentation. You can see I've got all the shot very evenly spread in the bottom half of the rig. And for the most part, well they're all number eight shot. Um, some of them are doubled up and then as I get close to the hook they just turn to singles. Um, it's a great presentation because what it's doing, it's getting the, the bait down in the flow, but it's making the maggot hook bait act very, very naturally. And that's the float I'm using. It's a Dave Harrell Alloy Dome Stick 8 number 4. Absolutely great float because it's easy to see. It's got a nice dome top. I can fish a little bit over depth and it doesn't drag under. Um, the wire stem very stable and very easy to cast. So. That's that rig. Obviously, you can change the, the permutations of the shot in a round. I could bulk those shot down if I needed to. But at the moment, that's working really well. And hook length on there, I've got 012 to uh, 18 hook. Well, it's again a bit difficult on the float, but I am getting the odd fish, and that's another decent sort of roach. Not a monster, but about five or six ounces. Well, the light's really starting to fade now. It's been quite a dull day anyway, and quite misty. And really, the, the float tactics haven't been the best today. I probably would have been better off just sticking with the maggot feeder. I was getting the odd bite and we were picking up a few fish. So it just shows, you know, the river's in a state of change really after the flood. But I've really enjoyed getting out and it's been lovely to get fishing on the river. And I hope that some of the tips that we've shown you today would help you out on a similar peg on perhaps one of the rivers that you fish. Let's have a look at the fish that we've caught. Well, there we go. It's definitely not my biggest Avon catch, but I've had plenty worse. And I think that could have been a section winning bag today, probably about six or seven pound of fish, maybe even snuck in the frame. It's not been the easiest of days, but I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>